First question is from Kai Johnson, and he says, Hi, Charlie and Ben. As an introvert, I have found some aspects of your Charisma University course extremely useful. Charlie has a great expressive style I have learned much from uh, about how he delivers the course content. Voice expressive voice express voice expressivity <laughs> that's a tough word <laughs> and gesticulation is on point naturally i am not a loud talker which isn't through lack of trying which makes aspects such as these extremely difficult for me i have certainly found the course as a whole very much focused on high energy charisma to be charismatic it is best to be an extrovert this is something that doesn't feel natural to me and i feel like i am working against the grain a majority of the time whilst practicing some of the action guides as a quieter person trying to become the high energy folk has made this journey of self-improvement a little bit mentally draining as, mm. and at points exhausting. Have you got any plans in the works for developing a course that is designed around introversion and low energy charisma, which still produces the same results as the high energy style? Or would you say that being high in energy is the only way to be truly charismatic? This is considering that a large portion of people who are looking to improve their social skills probably aren't extroverts. Yeah. Can I hop in with a quick definitional thing and then have you answer sure, the, sure. Uh, Go, can you be, can, can you be you charismatic like. without... Uh, what, can you be charismatic while being low energy and quiet? So I am an extrovert, which means I get energy when I go out with people and hang out with them. There are, are points in my life where I was very quiet because I didn't know what to say and I lacked confidence and this and that. Charlie's an introvert, which is to say that after being the life of the party, he needs to go home and be alone. But you can catch moments where you're the loudest, most laughy, telling stories, center of attention person in the room, mm -hmm. despite the fact that it is to some degree, going to drain you if you do it for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a confusion sometimes where people go, oh, I'm an introvert, I speak quietly. Or I'm an extrovert because I'm loud. And I don't think that's the case. So just to, I, I kind of want to interrupt the question and say, you can be an introvert who is high energy and loud for periods of time in conversation. Mm -hmm. And weirdly enough, you could enjoy the shit out of them. Like they won't be they won't be painful for you, even though they might feel that way now because your habits are to be quiet and shy. But you could go out, be the life of the party, make people laugh, be high energy, love it, and then leave to enjoy your time alone. Yeah. So, so that's the first thing I would say is I, I would really kind of try to disentangle the word introvert from the word quiet, shy, doesn't like talking to people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, that's, that's a helpful place to start. When... When I started, I, I felt similarly like this is going against the grain and it was work for sure to, to get started and it was emotionally challenging uh, to, to put myself out there. That was, yeah. that was the thrill of it was like, man, this is, this is like going to the gym. This is not easy mm -hmm. for me to do. Me too as an extrovert. Yeah. And so I think that there's an element of that that I have not found out a way to do it that for everybody is going to be totally in line with the way you're doing things. The, the very act of breaking habits and establishing something new is going to require going against the grain. Mm -hmm. It's going to require mental effort. A complete lack of mental effort is, is exactly the way that we've been doing things, which if you're in the course, is something that you're trying to improve upon or adjust in some way. Mm -hmm. So I can't promise you to take away the going against the grain feeling. <laughs> and uh, one thing I'd say is on the flip side, somebody taking the course is going to realize that they talk too much, mm. that they're not charismatic because they yap the whole time. They cannot listen. They cannot ask questions that the other person finds interesting to answer. And their lesson will be to talk less. And they will find it extremely uncomfortable. And they will be biting their tongue as thoughts race through their head. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's not to say that you're the only person who's going to have to do this discomfort because you're quiet. It's to say, if you're unhappy with the results you're getting, you will likely have to change some of your habits. Yeah. And that's true no matter what those habits are. As long as you don't like your results, you're going to have to change some of them. And so then, then I want to ask, so I guess what we're saying for the introverts, the goal is to build through some going against the grain and some effort, the capacity to on command or at least for stretches of time go into a mode that is more gregarious, outgoing, etc. And the reason for that is because if you look at quiet confidence or quiet charisma, what you will often find is that it is paired with something that draws attention, whether that is beauty or status or something or, or uh, yeah, fame, talent, fame, talent, something else such that if you think of the icons in that area, 
the desire for anyone to look at them in the first place, to notice their quiet confidence, is being generated. Yeah, James Bond can only have quiet confidence because of two things. The camera follows him the whole time, <laughs> so you're forced to look at him, and he is the world's greatest super spy. Mm -hmm. But it, certainly you could have a movie where James Bond was in it and you wouldn't even notice because he would just be a guy in the background who didn't say anything. Yeah, and by definition, any actor that you think embodies this quiet confidence, while there's definitely things to learn, and we've talked about Keanu Reeves and ways in which you could ask probing questions, and all of those things are... Uh, might might you might find versions of it that that suit you a bit better and perhaps we could even make a module that that highlights these uh he is you see him and you like him not because he's the guy in the back of the classroom or quietly hanging out uh, in in the bar yeah. but because he's on television he's john wick <laughs> he's john wick and then he comes and gets interviewed yes. and you have to watch because the camera's pointed at him so the reason that gregariousness, loudness, a willingness to speak first are so such important things is because in a world of six, seven, eight billion people, there needs to be a reason to notice you in particular. And if it's just quiet and you're not beautiful, wealthy, high status, but you're just like, you got a cool vibe, that is very, very easy to overlook. So it, there tends to, it tends to be the case that I wanted to, I won't, well, let me start here. I wanted to make a course that didn't require you to be beautiful or high status, you know, or, or anything. Rich, yeah. Or rich, yeah. Or that, rich. That was the goal such that the defining feature was your charisma. It was, it was your ability to stand out. And one step of that is going to be to gather attention. Now, I will say, once you have gathered attention and people are interested in learning more about you, you can pull it back more. Mm -hmm. You can uh, become, this is why when we talk about the four emotions that make a good first impression, three of them are really about establishing yourself, right? It's being fun with the other person, having them trust you and then respect something about you. But the fourth one is then turning it back on them. And so if you can find a way or for a short period of time to be more gregarious, outgoing, such that people do want to learn more about you, spend time with you, hang out in your presence, you can shift into a quieter mode mm -hmm. and maintain that sort of charisma. But it, to start with that, I will say I have not seen it done effectively in the absence of fame, wealth, or beauty. Or beauty. Sorry. <laughs> Solid answer. Any, any other? No, no, I think it's good. Cool. Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description. We'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.